get started. Uh, so yeah, let's jump right back out. Semantics, and we're talking about memory allocation because we want to know what kind of errors can occur in memory allocation. Uh, so we talked about, just to briefly go over Monday, what types of, so what's global memory allocation? What does that mean? Oh, sorry. Right, so allocation that's done once, so memory's allocated right when the program runs and then it's never released. So what's an example of this? Global variables, Global variables right? Yeah, classic example. All right. What about stack allocation? What's stack allocation? <coughs> yeah, memory that's allocated on the stack. It is directly <coughs> in the name. But how does that differ from global allocation? <coughs> What was that? It deallocates at the end of its usage. Yeah, so it's memory that's automatically created when that memory is in scope, right? So if you think local function variables and function calls, and then once that memory is out of scope, right, that memory is then automatically deallocated. So the awesome thing is you, the programmer, don't have to do anything to free this memory. Uh, what about the heap? Oh, like a heap, heap of allocation. Yeah, so heap is where we come in, right? So global allocation, the compiler controls. Um, stack allocation, also the compiler controls. Right? But heap allocation is us as programmers explicitly saying, hey, give me some memory operating system. I need some new memory. And as we all know from watching Spider-Man, right? with great power becomes great responsibility. Right? So you. They're giving you the power to allocate the memory, and you have to make sure you manually deallocate that memory. All right, so let's look at an example. So here we have, I would say, a normal complicated program. This is on the level of something that I would expect you to be able to you know, understand on an exam. Uh, so this x here at the top, so what kind of memory allocation is that? Global. Global. Yeah. Ooh. All right. <coughs> And so what about in here? So when we're executing the function main, this x, which x does this refer to? Global. Right? I guess the answer could say it depends if we're talking about uh, dynamic scoping or static scoping. Right? But we'll say that this is a C program. So, what, so C uses static scoping rules. So we know that that x statically refers to this declaration of an int x. And then when we get into here, so what type of allocation is going to happen here for this variable x? Stack. Stack, right? The, the program is going to create, so here's a little trick question. What's the size of that variable x? Is it going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 bytes? For the string texting? I did include it, I think. Right? Oh, yeah. uh, test is four, ing is three, plus one for the null byte. So is it going to reserve eight bytes on the stack for this variable? Yes. <laughs> what was that? Say it again. But isn't it an, uh, no, keep going. It's on the stack. It's, it's on the stack. How, what's the size? How big of memory is it going to? Eight. One byte? Maybe we have a wide range of answers. One byte, eight bytes. <laughs> so how big is a character? One byte. How big are addresses on a 32-bit system? 32 bits, so how many bytes? Four bytes. Four bytes. So what's the type of this variable x? It's an address. It's an address, right? It's a character pointer. So what's inside? So if you draw the circle box diagram here, what's the value that's inside this variable x? An address. An address. And how big is an address? Four bytes. So you know that this string is only going to be four bytes on the stack, right? And the address that's in that string is going to be 
uh, eight contiguous bytes that contain testing followed by a zero. Mm, where does the testing go? What type of memory allocation is that? Heap. Stack? Heap. Stack? Heap. Well, because you haven't used memory. Oh, memory. it's like global, global so you but it's you have not. It, you have it demanded Wait, memory. Just a second. Say it. I said it's like global, but I'm not sure if it is. Yeah, so actually the compiler can kind of do it however it wants. Uh, but this is actually global memory. <coughs> and I think we did this last the week before spring break, we actually saw that this is actually in read-only memory, so we can't actually write, if we tried to alter this string at x, we won't be able to change those parameters, uh, because that memory region is not writable. Uh, but that really doesn't matter. What matters is that the compiler sees, oh, there's this constant string, I need to globally allocate some space for that, and I'm gonna put the address here where that is in x. Just like the compiler knows exactly where x that int x is located, it does the same thing for that memory address of that constant string. Okay, so then we get here, we're gonna print out this x. So that x is in the heap. This x. Or is that The x? character pointer x? It's calling from global. It, so this variable x, right, which is a character pointer, so what type of memory allocation is this? You said global. Well, it's in the heap because it's in the scope. Uh, is it both? So the heap is only if we explicitly allocate it. So did we explicitly allocate anything here? No. 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 So that's only if we call malloc in a C program. Or new. Or new in a C++ program. So then what type of memory allocation is just this variable x? Stack. Stack, right? x is located on the stack. The value that x points to is located in global memory. So any, any kind of constant string that's sitting around, that always gets allocated into global memory. Yeah. Compiler. Exactly. Yeah, which is how you can get into, well, you can get into weird problems because it may, if you reuse that constant string testing somewhere else, mm -hmm. it may put that in one place and put that same memory location there. Is, is that only strings that it applies to, or is there other kinds of data? Like it, that wouldn't happen. Uh, the 1337, yeah, these are, I mean, it could happen if it needed to, but those are immediate values it can just put right in, right? Um, yeah, because it's not an address, right? I mean, it's not a character pointer. If you wanted to get a pointer to the value 1337, you'd have to do something else. Cool. All right, so then what happens when we leave this scope? What happens to our lovely X? Yeah, it gets automatically deallocated, right? So now any, so x no longer exists after that point. Awesome. Uh, okay, so then we go into the function foo, and we see this character c. So what type of allocation is this? Global. Oh wait, no, stack. Stack, stack, yeah. And so what's, so what's the size of this c? One byte. One byte, yeah, exactly, one byte, right? So that's the big thing, is pointers are always the size of the address, uh, address space on your system. So on 32-bit systems, they're going to be 4 bytes, 64-bit systems going to be 8 bytes. So yeah. that, that C would be loaded in a similar fashion to the, to the constant numbers. In the exactly. When you, yeah. When you look at the assembly, it's going to create space on the stack, and then it's going to just say move that whatever, uh, whatever the numerical that C, value that yeah, the ASCII value of C <laughs> is, move that into that location. All right, and then when we get past here, what happens to C? It's deallocated. It's deallocated, right, goes away. No more references, awesome. So what about here? So now we have a new X. So what's the size of this X? 32 bits, four bytes, right, this X. And so what type of allocation is happening here? It's a trick question. There's two types of allocation. Um, the malloc is. Say again? Say it The int star x is stack, but the other side of it is heap. Yeah, exactly. So the int star x, right, this x is located on the stack, stack allocated, 
right? And so there's going to be a box, and the circle in that box is going to be the value of the return of calling malloc to get a new int. So there'll be a new box, right? Malloc creates a new box of whatever size we pass in, and the address of whatever that new box is in is going to be in the value of int star x. So there's two allocations here. So we have the heap allocation with the malloc and the regular um, stack allocation with the variable x. Cool. All right. You're being greedy over there. Who? It's being greedy. It's taking up a lot more. Who's being greedy? That line of code, isn't it? It's taking up a lot more memory. That depends on how it uses it, right? All right. So what happens when we get here? Yeah, so remember, so the int star x is on the stack, so it automatically gets deallocated when we leave the scope. But the malloc, right, that memory remains. We never call three on that. So this memory is always going to be there. And so we'll look at kind of what errors. Um, so you've probably, well, I don't know, unless you're a perfect programmer, which I guess I can safely say, I'm not. I'll say that. I can safely say it. I'm not. I won't cast aspersions on any of your abilities. Um, so when we do this, right, when we've allocated some new memory, and then we leave like this, what happens to that memory that X was pointing to? Kind of just sits there. Yeah, it just sits there. Yeah. Becomes garbage data. Yeah, so we now have... Um, Garbage memory, right? So there's two main types of memory errors uh, that we want to learn about. It's not garbage, you're just not using it. It's garbage. We'll talk about it in a second. Oh, because uh, you're out of the scope. Because <coughs> hmm? you're out of the scope. Uh, not exactly. <laughs> we'll see the exact points to it. That's the problem. Exactly, yes. We have no way to refer to Access that again. memory. Exactly. Um, yeah. okay. All right, so let's, well, let's do some box circle diagrams. It's like when you delete something on your hard drive, but then you can't overwrite it. Similar, yes. <coughs> All right, let's look at an example of one thing. So let's say I have a function. Uh, oops, that's not how you write functions. And inside this function foo, we'll do it very similar right, to what I had before. So int star x. Let's do this. Int x is equal to 100. Return the address of x. And later I have uh, somewhere else I have uh, int star y is equal to foo. Is that a star? This is a star. So let's just look at the function foo in isolation. So what is it doing? Very dangerous. What is it? Something dangerous. It's dangerous? Maybe. It's returning the address of 100. It's returning the address of what? Does 100 have an address? What type of value is it 100? It's an R value. Yeah, exactly. So let's look at this, right? We have x. Right, circle box diagrams, we're going to have an x. What's going to be after the first line executes, what's the value that's going to be in x? 100. And so what's the address of x? Alpha. Call it alpha for now, right? Yeah. So what does return address of x return? Alpha. Alpha. Yeah, so is that valid? Can we do that? Yeah. Yeah, we can do it, right? Um, so it's going to return an alpha. But then what happens here, once this program starts, stops, once this function completes and returns? What's going to happen to our memory here? 
We lost the leak is? We lost the link to the actual yeah. deallocated. Right? X is automatically deallocated, which means this box goes away. Right? Everything goes away. And so, <coughs> the address still exists, but it doesn't have a box associated with it. Right? So now here, when we say int star y is equal to foo, so I have now y. So what's the value that's going to be inside y? Alpha. 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 So now what happens if I do, I don't know, what does star y do? Dereference. is y, but what box is that going to return? What do you know in that box? Could return 100, could return something else. <coughs> yeah, right? So we don't. The memory associated with location alpha has been deallocated, right? So now there's actually the compiler is kind of free to do whatever it wants at this point. It's undefined behavior, um, but it is very bad and can uh, <coughs> uh, actually security problems. Um, and so we say that uh, here why? So why here is a dangling reference? Right, so it has a reference to some memory that no longer exists. So it has just access to that address. It, it has an address, so it has a reference to some address, but that address has no box associated with it. Right? So any kind of memory can be in there. Any kind of data can be in there. Yes, exactly. There could be whatever and in it's alpha. Being constant. Uh, swapping? Well, maybe. That data that can be there can constantly. That could be anything. The point is, we just don't know. We don't know what's in there because that location that was associated with alpha was was deallocated here, right? And so it automatically went away. So let's consider a different scenario. Let's say we have That's heat, right? This? Where's this allocated? Stack. Stack. The stack oh, yeah. here. Right. So let's say we have some function and we want to we say Int star x is equal to malloc, and I'm kind of going easy on this and not doing all the casting. So we'll say four. Uh, int star y is equal to. So we can say, let's say, we can say star x is equal to. Somebody have a favorite number? Seven. Twenty. All right, twenty. I just pulled a number. <laughs> So then we say int star y is equal to x, right? Then what happens if later on we free x, right? So self-check, could you, oh, this is really, could you do a circle? So we have this main method. So, A, self-check. Can you do the circle box diagram here? Yes, because they're all awesome. OK, let's take this first one. So how many variable names do we have? Two. Two, x and y. Right, so we have x, and x is going to be bound to some location. Right? And so what's malloc going to do? Yeah, create some new box somewhere. So the heap memory. Right, on the heap, exactly. And the value inside there is nothing, so we'll give it the memory address, let's say alpha. So then what does this func what does this assignment statement do? We're saying x is now pointing at that box that we have just created. Correct. What does it do to my box circle diagram? Alpha. That goes away. The, we don't alpha. like it's garbage data. We don't care about it. No, it's not it's alpha. 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 It assigns alpha to x, so it copies the return the address of malloc into the value of the location associated with x. Right? <coughs> so this is the location associated with x, we take alpha, we copy it into here, right? So after that it's in here. So that effectively, right, oh, x star will point to this or star x will point to this box. Okay. Right? Cool. So now when we do this line, when we say star x is equal to 20, what's gonna happen? Alpha box now contains the value 20. Awesome. 
then we say int star y is equal to x. Right, so what this declaration means we're going to have a new location for y. So what's the value that's going to be in here? So we're saying y contains the value at y is the address. Is the address of x. The so address of x? What's that? Well, so like this? It's a because it's a pointer. Okay. Is it taking the address of x and putting it in? At the, um, is it putting alpha in there? <coughs> so what's an assignment? What does assignment statement mean? Just assign the alpha to y. Yeah. So take the what is the what do we do with the right hand side? Take Whatever the x is holding on to, which is alpha, and assign it to y. Yeah. yeah. So take the value and the location associated with x, copy it into the value of the location associated with y. Right. So the value and the location associated with x is alpha. We put it into y. Boom. So what happens when we free x? What happens? We lose. <coughs> no, we don't. Do we? No. Do we, do we get rid of x? No. <coughs> no, we deallocate. Say it again. Memory associated with the address of x. Dangerous. <laughs> yeah, so free x, right? But we've used x. Right, we allocated some memory on the heap, and now we have to free that memory. Right, that's our burden as programmers. Yeah. Okay. If after the star x equals twenty, we had y equals x, what would that do? Uh, which one here? Wait, don't we have that in star y equals x? If it was just y equals x, not in star y. Oh, if uh, it was declared up here. Uh, we just need to have a declaration, right? If it was just int x, <coughs> int y equals x. Ah, ah, ah. It would be a type error, but let's say we casted it or whatever. What's the difference here? <laughs> Is there any difference? <coughs> so what does this assignment statement say? Take the value and the location. It's take the value and the location associated with x. What's the value and the location associated with x? Alpha. Copy it into the value of the location associated with y. <coughs> right. So it's just here. So all pointers are is but it a type abstraction. Because y is not a pointer. Uh, it would. You need to cast it. <coughs> but you could do it. You could tell C that you want to do it because you're super smart. If you wanted to be referenced. Uh, yeah, you have to cast y to an int star to be able to dereference it. But all that casting is is your, you know, the computer only sees locations and data. data. So your cast just tells the compiler, hey, trust me, I know what I'm doing. I know I told you this was an int, but really it's an int star now. And then later on, oh, I know it's an int star, but really, trust me, it's just an int. So it'll do it. Um, whether it works or not is, you know, on you. Yes. Uh, yeah, but under the hood, it's the same. So that's what this is exactly what it's going to look like. So then, what are the so we know the semantics of malloc, right? Malloc create new box, give it a new address. So free, the semantics of free are exactly the opposite, right? So what is free going to do? Destroy the box. Destroy the box. Which box? X's box? No. no. Uh, uh, which the box? The alpha twenty box. Alpha. Yeah. So this is going to completely destroy this box. And then we lose the twenty. Does it do anything to X? Nope. Not until you leave the scope. That's where it's dangerous. No, nope. exactly. Right. It does not do anything with X. Still and now, so if I said star Y is equal to 100, so now is. Um, that's a good question. Does it zero out X? I'm actually not sure. I don't think so. But so let's look at this. So is Y a dangling reference? <coughs> Star y equals 100 yeah. is assigning 100 in the address of y. So what was a dangling reference here? Why was y here a dangling reference? Because it had an address, right, that has no box associated with it. Yeah, it's the same problem. Exactly, exactly the same problem. So here both, actually, well, 
We wouldn't call x a dangling reference because we've already freed it. So I believe it's probably going to zero this out or something. He should be running that code. Yes. Still semantic errors. Exactly. It is a number, but the point is that semantically that number doesn't refer to anything meaningfully in your program. Okay. Yeah. So you don't have to set it equal to the point equal to zero or null when you're after you uh, free it. I thought that was like typical practice or something. Yeah, let me look at why that is. Uh, this is why we have manuals. Because uh, I can't remember if it, 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 because you're passing it into this function, so it can't actually change the value in that pointer. So maybe that's why you zero it out. Um, you do zero it out for safety because you don't want to reuse it. Oh yeah, so it must not do it. Um, <coughs> interesting. So it's good practice too when you when you deallocate, you also set whatever you want. Yes. To to null. Yeah. So actually, that's a good point. So let's do this. Let's say that now x is equal to null. Right. The weird null. Um, right. So in here, so after these two lines execute, what's the value that's going to be inside x? Null. Null. Y is it still a dangling reference because it has the memory address in it of a box that is no longer exists, right? And here's where you can get into trouble. If let's say, can I do this? It's been a while since I tried this. No. But you're assigning the value to that dangling address. <laughs> uh, just like okay. So now if we say. Uh, int star a is equal to malloc 4, right? So in our diagram, what's going to happen here? So we have an int, so we have a, right? A is stack allocated here. And then we have the malloc. So malloc is going to create some new memory location, right? Let's say it's up here. So what's the address of this? Beta. Say beta. Cool. Then we copy beta into here. So then if I say, let's see, star a is equal to, we'll do 11. Right, so star a equals 11, so we're going to look up beta, we're going to look up betas here, and we're going to put 11 in here, right? And so then I say star y is equal to 11, and then let's say I print out Print out star a. So what's a going to print out here? Eleven. So a is this going to crash? Could it crash? Will it crash? Should it crash? And then what's this going to output? We what would we want it to output? 11, right? That's what we want it to output. But what if alpha and beta are the same value? Because the system, like malloc, is creating data right on the heap and freeing that data, so it's reusing addresses. So if alpha and beta are the same value, then what's this star y equals 100 going to do? Put 100 here. And then when we output star a, it's going to output 100. Uh, so this is actually what happens most of the time, because malloc reuses addresses very frequently. Um, so when you call free and then you call malloc, you're going to get a pointer to the same address. And this is why this is conceptually, semantically, it's a huge problem, because alpha has no location associated with it, right? Yeah. Does new have the same behavior? Under the hood, new definitely calls malloc. It does other stuff. It has to create uh, the virtual function table so it can call all the functions of your um, of your objects and all that stuff. So there's like more work that's involved. But I think at the very bottom it calls malloc. Okay. Like, I don't think there's a big. I don't think there's any difference in between the two. Hmm. Yeah, I should look at that. Cool. Okay, 
So in both cases, these are dangling references. And they're it's actually one of the more subtle problems because your code could work like this. Like it's oftentimes it will not crash when you dereference y. Right? Because y is the compute. Y once held a valid address, so it's highly likely that that address, at least to the computer, is a valid address. Right? It's not like you're trying to dereference zero or null, which is usually never uh, allocated to your program. So this is why this is such a tricky error. So this is uh, dangling ref. See if it goes. Okay. Right. So this is when you ref when you have a reference to a memory address that was originally allocated but is now deallocated, right? So you have a pointer with a value inside that pointer of something that does not, an address that does not have a corresponding location. So what is garbage? Is it what we, I don't know, throw in the oceans and the trash? Technically. Technically. <laughs> in computing. So, so what do we talk about as garbage? Not deterministic, in what sense? Memory with value that we can add. Yeah. So we talk like you're saying later that if you don't, if you have a memory address that you cannot have a reference to, um, and there's no way to access that memory, so that becomes garbage in the sense that you can never use it. Right. Yeah. So um, in order to free memory, right? So so global allocation, right, is done by the compiler. It's never deallocated, so we never have to worry about it, right? It's not like we're going to have too much global memory. Either our program works at the beginning with that amount of global memory, or it doesn't, right? And stack allocation, we don't really have control over, in some sense, right? The compiler is automatically allocating that memory and deallocating it automatically for us, so we don't have to think about it. So heap memory, right? When we call malloc or we call new, we're telling the system, hey, I want some new memory, and I want to control when that goes away, right? So as we saw in this last example, how do we free memory? This is kind of a freebie. I should, should have said deallocate. How do we deallocate memory? With the free function. But what do we pass into the free function? A pointer. We have to pass in the address that we want to free, Address. right? That's how the system knows how to free that memory location. Yeah. Sort of a can you like, specify what address you want to allocate at? Is that an option in C? Mm. Or is it, do you never get the option to specify the memory address itself? You could no. pass it in, can't you? Can you? Pass in the address? You can hard code. You can put in an a explicit address into a pointer and dereference it, but the problem is it's not going to be uh, allocated to your program. You probably have to do some other system calls to tell the operating system to allocate that segment to your program. Uh, I think you could do it. Actually, you could probably do it with your ELF file, because the ELF file specifies the memory segment, so you can specify that you want a certain segment at a certain location, and it'll take care of doing that. So uh, I think yes, but I would never, ever do that. <laughs> um, but the kernel has to do that sometimes, because the kernel has to play games with, uh, because the kernel is always in like, usually high memory locations. So anyways. Whole big thing, but yeah. Once you talk about kernels, so you have kernels running in, the, and you have virtual memory, it gets kind of crazy. So, cool. All right. Okay. So garbage, right? So free needs an address, right? But what if we can never get to that address? Oh, you guys can't see that. What do I need? Let's say I have a program, and I'm going to, so I have a function, okay, this will just be that other example, right? So I have some function, it doesn't need to be, it's a void function, right, it doesn't take anything in, uh, it has some int pointers, x, and we're mallocking, let's do something malloc a bunch of bytes, and we return, right? So this is pretty much all of our program, 
right? When we get into the function foo, where's int star x going to be allocated? On the stack. Yeah, so there's going to be an x. It's going to have some box. So what's malloc going to do? Yeah, create us some 100 megs of memory, right? So it's going to create that on the heap, so it'll just be like a really big circle. Um, and let's say it has some memory address alpha, right? So the way we have to free this memory location is we have to pass into the free function. We have to pass in alpha, right? This is the only way the system knows, hey, this is the memory that we want to free. We can't free the bytes, the, the 100,000, 100 million. Yeah, we can't just say free this because it we're mallocking stuff all over the place, right? So it internally keeps track of what chunks are what and how big they are and all this stuff. Um, so x, so after this, after this, um, what's going to happen here, the semantics here? Where, what? So malloc is going to create this. It's going to have some address alpha, and then alpha is going to be put into the value of the location associated with x. So now, any place in function foo, how do we free this memory address? Yeah, we call free x, right? Because x has this new memory location. So once foo executes, what happens to x? Yeah, stack allocated, right? So as soon as it's outside of the scope, x is going to be deallocated. So then, how do I free this? You don't. We can't. Yeah, there's no, we have no references to this location alpha, right? Because alpha varies at runtime. It's going to be different every time. We can't hard code that. Can, can you write that to null? Uh, write what to null? Whatever the address of alpha is holding. Uh, ad, alpha is an address. Oh, okay. It's just and it has address. memory in it that we've allocated on the heap. In order to free that, we have to pass free alpha. We have to pass alpha to the free function. But there's no way we can get to that value alpha. right? We have no references to this value alpha. So this is why alpha at this point is considered garbage, because we've allocated it, and there's absolutely no way our program can ever free that memory after this point. Right? If we had other things where we had like uh, y, which had a beta in it, and then z, which had uh, alpha in it, and so z, the address of z was beta, and y is, I don't know, I'm running out of letters, uh, c. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So y, right, the pointer of y is Z, or even if this isn't Z, we don't actually care if that is or is not named. Right? Let's say it's not named. So here, B may be also on the heap. Right? It may be also heap allocated, or beta, sorry, it may be also heap allocated. Um, but through Y, we can take the name Y, we can dereference it to get beta, the location associated with beta, and then that, if we take that dereference, that now gives us this location. So here, even though we don't have a named variable with the value alpha, we can still, through our pointer dereferences, get to that. So we could possibly free it if we wanted to. Or in the previous circumstance, there's no possible way we could free the memory location alpha. Yeah. So how do like for a uh, language with garbage collection do this? Then? Yeah. So what languages with garbage collection do is periodically, uh, so they keep track of all the boxes, essentially. And then they will start with some root. So they'll start with uh, the variable names. So they'll keep track of the variable names. They'll start with those boxes. They'll follow all of these pointers. And then every pointer that they can see is memory that is being used and is not garbage. And that other set of memory that it allocated but it did not find, that's garbage and it can be free. And it can be reused. So there's all kinds of techniques to make this faster. But this is exactly what garbage collection is looking for. Because uh, garbage collection knows, OK, I, I know I have all these boxes. Then starting from the variables, find all the boxes that I can find. And then anything I can't find is garbage. Cool. All right. All right. 
Okay, so here in the main function, we have a pointer. And so we have an int star dang or dangling is probably how I should have said that. Um, so we're calling the function foo, right? And so foo calls in here to x. So x is stack allocated here, right, like we saw. And so x is going to have the value 100. And then we're going to return whatever that address of that stack allocated variable x is. And then so when that returns, dang is still going to have a value. Um, and so we can print out dang as a pointer. So we can print out the actual address, that value inside this variable. And then we can dereference it and print that out too. Um, so it prints the address and the value. And the value inside of it, right? But what is dang pointing to at this point? What was that? The return value of foo. The return, what is the return value of foo? The address of x, right? So is dang the dangling reference at this point, right? It's in the name, right? Um, so the dangling reference, right? So because whatever x is, as soon as foo returns, x is deallocated, right? It essentially no longer exists to our program, but we still have a reference to some memory location that has no semantic meaning at this point. So we'll see what happens when we print this out. And then we'll call bar. Uh, so bar has an int y, uh, uh, what is this, 10,000, a variable z, one, uh, zero. And then it's going to print out y and z, right? So these are going to refer to these values here. It should print out 10,000 in space zero. Uh, then it's going to return. And then we're going to print out dang again. So in a normal way, what should it be printing out here? Should be the exact same value printed out before. Yeah, it should be the same, right? Right. I mean, looking at this, looking at bar, you can see bar isn't changing any global variables or anything, right? And dang itself is not global, right? So here we have two identical lines. And then we have a function in between that doesn't change any global state. So it should output the exact same thing, right? Yeah. Wouldn't the problem here be if I did call bar, then it would go as code in a way? So it wouldn't, I mean, it should not, but. You mean dang does. itself? Yes. Because you, you call bar, right? So. Yes, I call bar. Technically, it should not, like you said, it should print out what it printed out before. Mm -hmm. but, you call, but because you call bar, right? Now it's looking at the memory that Y and Z help hold right now. Mm, okay, in we'll, we'll look at that in a second. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But important note, right, just so that we're clear. If this was like an int x, right, right, calling bar shouldn't affect x unless right. we pass x into that function, right? That's right. Um, yeah, so looking at this, right, these two should print out the same thing. So we'll look at okay. what it does and why it does that. One's got a dangling address, then it probably won't. I mean, yeah, you can probably use some Bayesian reasoning, right? And say, well, I probably would be showing you an example if it was like, oh, it does exactly what we thought. Okay, so uh, can what's gonna happen when I compile this? Will this program compile? Nope. Yes. yes. Are there gonna be any errors? No. Ooh. Let's see. Uh, so it's not gonna be an error, but it is gonna give me a warning. So uh, the GCC compiler that we're all using on CentOS. So this is on CentOS. Uh, it's telling me that it's returning an address of a local variable, right? So why is that bad? Yeah, so it's, it automatically goes away, right? The scope, that address of x is only valid within that scope of that local variable, yeah. So will bar get the same memory allocation that stack had on the, or that foo had, and therefore bar will have the same sort of variables that were being assigned to it as foo? Let's, find, let's find out. No. Does everyone have a thousand warnings on my code? <laughs> Possibly. I mean, hopefully not this error, because otherwise really bad things will happen. But um, OK, so running this. So it's going to first print out dang. So it's I think it's on the 64-bit system. Yes, which is why that address is so large, right? Is that right? Four. All right, so it's going to print out some address, right? The address of dang, and it's going to print out 100, right? Which is actually kind of what we expect. Right, so after calling foo, 
we see, ah, oh, great, we have a pointer to something, and then the value inside that pointer is 100. Seems true. That's what we, that's exactly what our code wants to do, right? We're pointing to some value there. And then it prints out 10,000 and zero. Oh, because bar, yeah. It's like, that doesn't make any sense. 10,000 is not a memory address. <laughs> Got it, yes, good. We'll get to you all. All right, so the value inside dang does not change, right? It's still allocated inside, it's dang is still stack allocated inside main scope, right? So the value inside there doesn't change. So this should not be surprising, right? That that memory address does not change. But instead of what's at that memory address is now 0 instead of 100. Super weird. So let's look at it again on, this is on my GCC, on my, sorry, my, well, my Mac. Uh, so let's see. So it does give a warning as well with actually a nicer error message. Then when we run it, it says, OK, the same thing, not the same address, but an address in 100. It says 10,000 zero, and then it has the same thing with 10,000, right? So what's in that memory location is 10,000, and where's, what's 10,000? Why? Why? Why, yeah. So uh, what we'll actually see. So it's doing different stuff on different operating different Yes. Computers. So A, that's one thing, right? So we have a dangling reference. We have a reference to memory that's not allocated. So the spec does not say what happens when you dereference that, right? That's why undefined behavior. So by doing this, it could be literally anything. Um, but specifically what's happening is the stack is getting reused. And so when foo executes, right, it gets created when, so main has a, an entry on the stack, foo has an entry on the stack. And then when foo returns, that is automatically deallocated. And then when bar is called, bar reuses that same stack that was once the memory locations of foo. And that's why, in this case, I don't know 100% if this 0 comes from this 0 of z. I should have changed it. Or if it's another 0, some kind of padding. Uh, but this 10,000 is exactly from this variable y. Um, cool. All right, so. Yeah, so this is why, so you can see, but the code didn't crash, right? If the code crashed, it would be really easy to tell that there was a problem here. But it doesn't, it just kind of works, but it works in weird ways. Um, yeah, you don't, it's not set to define how it should work. Exactly, so, all right, so this is dangling references. We'll finish off uh, all the semantics on Wednesday, no, today's Wednesday, Friday.